going on everybody welcome back to my channel so today is going to be a uh, kind of a simple install back on the build series so i'm going to be installing the head on there not too much is going to go into this honestly it's just it's very straightforward you uh put your head gasket make sure you got your dowel pins put the head on torque it and um it's good to go so it should be a quick video i am just going to uh, go over it just in case you guys have never done it and uh, obviously the torque specs that I'll be using for the ARP head studs. Good news, I actually got some confirmation. My oil pump should be here very shortly so um, whenever this video goes up the motor is probably already going to be assembled because uh, this is kind of far back in the series. But yeah, I'm going to make street wars so uh, first things first let's get everything ready. I got everything laid out. So everything is laid out for me right here i should actually push this block a little closer but that's all right that's besides the point so um here's the head gasket i'll be using uh it's a comedic i used this one the last time i had no issues at all with this one thing um if you guys are looking to use a comedic i use the 88 millimeter because comedic doesn't make an 87 and a half mil head gasket for some reason so the 88 works just fine if you're looking to use that i do have brand new uh dowel pins because when I initially took the head off, the dowel pins were stuck and I just kind of had to break them off. So we're going to be installing these onto our head first and uh, get moving on this. Your part number here in case you guys are looking to buy some brand new dowel pins. They're not that expensive. There's your part number. They come, no, they don't come as a pair. I think this is for a single one. So when you do order them, you got to get two. These dowel pins, they'll go in either way but they go into specific areas. So when you go to look at the head, I have the exhaust side right now facing up. So our intake side is right here. They're gonna go on your intake side. And if you're not sure, again, if, I mean, if you're not sure if it goes on the intake side, you look for the little radius on the head. So these two ports have a slight radius and that's for these two dial pins, just to kind of slide in there, just like that, as you guys can see. Because I think they will go in here, but it's got too much of a gap. And this side is just too tight. So they're gonna go right into this area right here on the radius. Sometimes you gotta tap them in. In this case, they actually just slid right in for us. So these are all ready to go. Now we're gonna lay our head gasket down. I'm telling you, this is gonna go very quick, this video. Before we go onto installing our head gasket onto here, um, I should talk about this little guy right here. And I've noticed it, it's on this K24, which is a K24A4. I was I never got any kind of confirmation on what this little it's like a little rubber piece where this goes is right on front right here where your water housing would go it's gonna go right into this corner and as you can see it'll just slide right in there and what I believe this to be is kind of like a coolant diverter it just the way it's shaped and the way it uh, it fills in here you can kind of see it in these areas it just kind of helps divert coolant into certain passages I'm not sure how crucial it is to have this. I've always had it in the block, so that's why I put it back. Um, but that's where that goes in case anybody takes their block apart and they find these little things right here. They are part of the block. It's not like somebody threw them in there. In my opinion, I think they're just a coolant diverter. If you if you know exactly what that is, definitely put it in the comments because I'm curious to know what this is, what it's called, and what its real job does. So with this in the way, or with this installed, now we can, uh, first we'll put our head studs on and then we'll lay our head gasket right over that. Head studs, I obviously went with ARP head studs. These work great. I mean, this car is making 300 at the crank. So th these are just fine for that. You don't need to go anymore. Factory head bolts probably work great, but um, I just like using the head studs. And I've seen a lot of people do this. When they come with the Molly loop, you don't need to put it on the bottom threads. The, this is only gonna go in hand tight into your block. You don't torque this down. So when you put this down, all you do, is you run it down with the um, let me show you with the allen head up so this is where you're going to tighten it with an allen head or an allen key is that going to focus in there you guys can probably see that so that faces up then the rest they just go in you get your allen key just snug it down and then you torque the nuts on top so head studs are all they're all snug hand tight we have our coolant diverter. So next, we're just gonna throw our head gasket on there. This is an MLS head gasket. In case you guys are wondering, that means it's a multi-layer steel head gasket. Here we go. That's just what it looks like, as you can see. The multi-layers in here. That's just 
That's what an ML MLS head gasket means if you guys were ever curious. So this is only gonna go on one way and you always have to just double check to make sure you put it on the right way. So just line everything up. So it should be just like this. It'll line right up with our head studs. Double check all your coolant ports. Make sure that they're all lined up into the uh, to uh, the openings for the cool for the head gasket openings. So, although I showed you guys where the dowel pins go on the head and basically how to install them in the head, you just put them into those spots. I'm not going to be leaving them in the head. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting them actually on the block side of this, and I'll show you why. The reason why I want to put the dowel pins on the block side is because, as you can see, this head gasket it um it moves around, right? So in order to kind of locate this a little better and so my dowel pins don't scratch the top of this head gasket is I'm gonna put them right in the spots where they should be. So you can see that little um, radius on that hole right there and on, uh, on this hole right under there. Like I said, this is the intake side of the motor. So the dowel pins go on the intake side. I'm gonna put the dowel pins on here so that way the head gasket is basically centered and when the head comes down, it doesn't really crush it in the wrong way. That's just the way you should do it. I probably should have just showed it from you, showed it to you guys this way from the beginning, but this is the way we're gonna do it so that way nothing gets crushed or nothing is out of whack. You can just slide the dowel pins right down, line them up, okay, Go right there. Okay, this one slid in a little easier than this one. There we go. You just gotta force it down a little bit. Now, as you can see, the head gasket, well, you guys can't really see, but the head gasket doesn't really slide side to side anymore, and that's what you want. So that way we know it's centered the way it needs to be. So we're just gonna go over everything one more time, go over everything one more time. So we have our dowel pins, head gasket, we have our coolant diverter, head studs are all ready to go. That's it, we're ready to throw the head on it. When you are gonna put the head on it, really try to be very, very careful as you're lowering the head down onto the studs. You don't really want the studs to nick the bottom of your head because the head is a machine surface if you are redoing it or if you, you know when you scraped all the gasket off you, you want that to be a flat surface with no scratches on it so the head gasket can seal properly and also if you do kind of nick the head a little bit with the threads because these threads are pretty sharp you can get very very fine aluminum particles that might fall somewhere here you don't you don't really want that floating in your motor so just really try to be as careful and as slow as you can you might kind of touch the studs a little bit it's almost inevitable with it like this but just really do your best to not move it around on the studs the easy way i've always seen to grab the head is just by the spark plug tube so what i try to do is line them up by eye as you can see i'm already touching them a little bit pretty much in there and it might not sit flush all the way that's because now the head's got to fall on the dowel pins so kind of work it around a little bit you have to lift it up a little bit there we go so now I felt them start so we're just gonna give it a good push and that's pretty much it just make sure it's flat all the way around And sometimes what I'll do is I'll grab a, a rubber mallet and I'll just kind of tap it to make sure it's completely flat. Now this next step is where it actually you have to kind of pay a little more attention to what's going on. And we are going to be using the uh, ultra, the, the uh, what do they call it? Whatever ARP calls their uh, molly lube for the nuts. We're going to be using that now and I'm going to show you. <laughs> Here's our washers and our nuts. So we're going to start placing these down. One thing about the washers, you do need to pay attention. So if we get this in the light, as you can see, there's a tapered edge or a tapered side, which is right here. And then the opposite side is flat. When you install these, the flat side needs to go into the head. So it's gonna go down like this over the stud. Here, I'll show you. Okay. We have the stud right here. We have the taper side facing up and the flat side facing down. So this would go right over the stud, just like that with the taper side facing up and you want the flat side down because the flat is gonna make contact on the bottom of the head when you install it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna be installing some of the uh, the torque, the ultra torque lube, I think that's what it's called, on the bottom of the washer, on the top of this washer. 
then on the bottom of this nut. The reason I personally put it in all those three places, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people do it, but the, 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 the lube basically acts to help, to help the torque reading. So what it does is, it's almost like a high pressure lube, I'm pretty sure, that as you're putting the torque on it and you're stressing the fastener, it just helps that nut glide almost over so that way you can achieve your torque reading a lot easier that's all that's for and because it's a high pressure lube it can take that stress of actually kind of stretching the stud just just very little but enough to where it, it just makes it easier so you can achieve it achieve your torque reading a lot better so that's why we're going to place that torque lube in those three spots then we're going to torque the head down to 70 foot pounds but in three in three steps so it'd be like maybe 25, 50, and then I would go to 70. And that would be it. So the first set would be 25 foot pounds in the torque, the, um, not the procedure, the uh, the steps, the torque steps, you know, the way you have to do it. Then I'd bump the torque wrench up to 50, then I'd bump it back up to 70, and that would be my final torque. All the nuts are ran down. They're just uh, ran down finger, well not finger tight, you know, snug with the wrench, as you can see all the torque lube is just seasoned. Well, not seasoned. It's kind of just coming out. So all of that was laid out. And I want to touch on something on what I use to get basically all the specs for my motor. Oh, that got blurry. The book I use, because I saw this was actually one of the most, the biggest question that I got asked a lot is I used the actual RSX. This is the service manual. This is for 02 to 06 Type S base model. It's just the OEM service manual. You can find this on, I think I got this on eBay. I'll see if I can find a link, but it's just, just, it gives you everything from, you know, troubleshooting to specs and everything. So in here, I would go to like wherever the engine section is. So it's in here somewhere, I'll find it. But here you can see it shows all the exploded views of where everything is. That's where I, that's what I use to get all my specs. So if I can find a link, I'll put it in the description below, but it's just a RSX service manual. So here's your diagram in case you guys are curious on the steps that you go, well, the number of steps that you have to go when you're torquing your cylinder head down. And it's just kind of simple. You just start from the middle and you're just going to work your way out in a crisscross pattern. So this is the, this is the, um, the sequence. That's the word I'm looking for. This is the sequence I'm going to be using. Start with 25 foot pounds. So because these nuts are actually a little recessed into the head, and I don't have a deep socket. The size of the nuts are a 13 millimeter 12 point. So it's not a six pointer, it's, it's a 12 point socket. I don't have a deep socket of that. So I'm just gonna be throwing a extension on it. It's, it's really not gonna affect much. So don't, you can use it. I, maybe it'll affect one or two foot pounds, nothing crazy. So that's, that's, it's okay. I've used extensions on torque in this head multiple times. I've never had a head lift and I've never had a, fail, a head gasket failure. So it works if you need to um if you don't feel comfortable then i guess just get in a get a uh, deep socket 13 12 point one thing i do want to mention about when you're going about torquing your uh your bolts or any bolts in that you want to do it in one full sweep in motion you don't want to i mean it's not bad but it's good practice when you do torque a bolt it's you know you're basically stretching it you want to go just at one full motion so that way you don't stop and you're not kind of like hanging and pulling on it. You just want to go one full motion when you're torquing the bolts so that way it, it torques evenly. Well, with that being said, the whole head is torqued down. That pretty much wraps up the head installation if you are installing a head. I'm going to have to stop right here because like I said, I don't have the oil pump yet. So I can't throw the rockers or the cams or the chain or anything because the oil pump needs to go on first. Or well, with that so I can start installing all the chains. So we're gonna leave it at that. I'll give you guys a look at uh, how the block is looking now. Now it's uh, it's beginning to take stage as a long block. It technically is considered a long block just without the cams and the oil pump, but it looks good. I gotta say, I really like the titanium hardware on it. There it is. I'm loving it. Looks good. Everything is all nice and torqued over here. We're looking good here. Still waiting, like I said, to assemble the whole front end or the front of the motor so we can put our pump and then we could put the uh, the pan on it and just really seal the bottom of this up. And once we seal the bottom of this up, everything else goes together so easy. Just the water housing, the knock sensor, all the other sensors that go on, it's just so much easier. But this is where we're at right now. 
we're almost there I have the rest of the parts lane right there uh, I actually picked this up today I'll show you guys so I did get the, the crank pulley or the damper this is considered a damper now um, I'll make a video on how to install this because I know there is not a certain way to install it but it can be a little pain so I'll show you guys how to install that and all the cams and everything are just covered over there so like I said that's pretty much the end of this video it is a very quick video on just how to slap the head on just wanted to show you guys the head is on and we're that much closer to putting the motor back in the car so I want to appreciate you for watching this video if it really helped you out if you enjoyed the video give me a big thumbs up if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe I got tons of more videos coming out on this build series and I look forward to giving you guys more videos in the future and uh, really start throwing in some more some more good parts on this so I'll catch you guys in the next video stay motivated and keep making those streets louder